Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are going to look into Lambda's introduction. In this video, I'm going to straight jump into IntelliJ and start writing the program. I have already written a small program and I'm going to modify that program to meet the requirement first without Lambda's and then we will use Lambda's. Let us go over what I have already written. So I have an animal class. The animal class have three properties. It has a name of the type string and it has can hop property of the type boolean and it has a third property called can swim of the type boolean as well. Note that in this class I have used Lombok to create getters and setters and also the all argument constructor. So it's no different than me writing it manually. So Lombok is just a shortcut way to do that. If you want to learn about Lombok, feel free to watch other videos on YouTube. But for this video, just know that Lombok is just a way to write getters and setters and the constructors in a shortcut way. So I don't have to type all of these. I can just use the annotations. Apart from the animal class, I have also created a check condition interface. This interface has one method called test. The test takes animal as input and it returns a boolean value and also i have created a main class that has the main method within the main method i have created a list of animals and i have added three different animals to it i have added a lion and that lion cannot hop but it can swim the second one dog it can hop and it can also swim and the cat it can hop but the cat cannot swim in this example and also I have created a print method within the main class and that print method takes the list of animals and also it takes the interface check condition. Within the method, we will loop through all the animals one by one and within the if condition, we will do the test of the condition and if it returns true, then we will simply print the name of the animal and if it becomes false, we'll just skip over and continue with the remaining animals on the list. Now let's say we have a requirement that we want to print all the animals that can hop. So without using lambdas, the way I would do it is I would create a concrete class of the check conditions interface, implement my logic within the test method that I would override. And in the main method, I would create the instance of that concrete class and call the print statement with the animals list and also that newly created instance. Now if I run the program, then the instance of the can hop will be passed into the print method. And while we loop through the animals on line number 23, in the if condition, we are going to execute the code of the test method that we have just written. And if that returns a true value, we are going to print the animal name. If not, we are going to skip it. So it is going to achieve the requirement that we want to do, which is we want to print the animal that can hop. Now, let me go ahead and remove this way. And instead, let me write it the program using the lambdas. So I'm going to delete where we created the instance. And we don't need the class anymore. So I'm going to delete that whole class. And I'm going to replace the second argument with a lambda. Now let's look at the construct of a lambda. That arrow function that you see tells the Java compiler that it is a lambda. On the left hand side of the arrow are the parameters that are passed into the lambdas. On the right hand side is the body of the lambda. When we have a single line in the body of the lambda, the value that is returned from that particular statement that single line we have written is actually returned from the lambda so in this case get can hop so can hop is a boolean type the getter of it will return a boolean so in this particular case the lambda is returning a boolean back so now when we compile this java program there are a couple of things that are inferred by the java compiler and let's see what are what are those information that are inferred so in this case we are calling the print method. The very first argument of the print method is animals. And as we see, it's list of animals on the parameter. So that's uh, it's pretty straightforward, nothing special about it. 
Now when it sees the lambda as a second argument and it sees the check condition interface as a second argument in the actual method, now it tries to infer lambda based on the interface. Now here is when very important point comes into play that lambdas will work only when the interface has one and only one unimplemented method. If it has more than one unimplemented method, the lambda wouldn't work and we will see what kind of error we see in that case later on. Now first look into the compilation of the lambda. The way it will compile is it checks the construct of the lambda and it also checks the signature of the test method we have written in the check condition interface and it first compares whether they match or not. In our case, we have only one parameter going into the test method and in our lambda, we have only one parameter which is A. And this is where also the inference come into play. Now it knows that the parameter that we are passing in the lambda is of the type animal because that is the type of the variable that is in the signature of the test method. Now when compiler sees that the type of the A variable which we are passing into lambda is animal, the body itself, it knows that A is an animal and we do have a method called get can hop. In our case it does. So that is why the compiler will just pass. And also the return of the get can hop is a boolean and return of our test method is also a boolean. The signature of the test matches to the lambda that we have written. Now when it comes to execution, think of lambdas as the shortcut way of writing the implementation of the interface. So the body of the lambda becomes the body of the method of the class that is implementing the check condition interface in our case. And now when the program runs, this lambda is passed over as an argument to the print method. And on line number 22, where we are checking the condition, it actually executes the body of the lambda. In the previous code, it was executing the code that we had written in the concrete implementation of the interface, which we all know, all know how it works. In this case, it will execute the body of the lambda. Body of the lambda returns boolean, which is being checked in the if condition. So if it returns true, it will print the animal. If it returns false, it will just skip over the if condition. And now let me save and run this program. And as you would expect, we would see dog and cat in the output because these are the two animals that can hop. Lion cannot hop, so it has just skipped over. Now let's say we have a requirement that we want to print all the animals that can swim. I can again do it with the lambdas. I'm going to call the print method again with the animals as the first arguments and I'm going to write a new lambda in which we, I will check the condition when the animal can swim. So it is as straightforward as that. Let me also put a print statement so that we can differentiate the output. Now, how about if you want to print all the animals whose name starts with D? I'm going to call print method again, passing the animals as first argument. And in the second argument, I'm going to write the lambda functions where I write A dot get name. I'm getting the name of the animal dot starts with D. So in this case, I got the name of the animal, which is of the type string and starts with is already a method available on a string that would return a boolean statement. You can check the documentation on Google. So that takes a string as inputs, the starts with method, and it returns the boolean as output. So overall, our lambda function is taking an animal in and it's returning back the boolean, which meets the condition of the test method in the check condition. So what this means is we can write any lambda function in here as a second argument of print which would take an animal and which would return a boolean any lambda function and we can do it on the fly we don't have to go through the pain of creating a concrete class and then implementing the test and writing the logic in there it's just more code we can do the same thing in less number of lines now let me show you 
how to write the lambdas in a slightly different way. So we are still writing lambda, just a different way. And this is more for you to get familiar. Let me get rid of the code that we don't need. And in this case, I'm going to explicitly mention the type of the parameter, which is animal in our case. And when I mention the type of the parameter, then it is a requirement that we need to enclose the left hand side of the lambda into the parenthesis. That is a valid lambda function. Also, what I'm going to do is on the right hand side where we have written the body of the lambda, I'm going to enclose the body of the lambda into curly braces. Now, the important thing is when a lambda's body has only one line, then the curly braces are optional. And whatever that one single statement we have written, the value returned by the statement becomes the return of the lambda. But when your lambda has more than one lines, then we do need the curly braces. Then curly braces are not optional. They are required. And when we have the curly braces, if the lambda returns something back, we do need to explicitly use the return statement to tell lambda which exact value do we want to return back. So in this case, I'm going to just put a dummy print statement. So this is just another way to write the lambda function. If you remember, I mentioned that lambdas will work only when our interface has one unimplemented method. Let's actually add one another method in our interface and see what type of error do we get. I have added another method, which I have named it as test as well. Doesn't matter what name we give. It's taking a string and it's returning a Boolean. Now coming back to the main class, if I hover over the error method, it says multiple non overriding abstract methods found in the interface check condition. So essentially it's saying you have more than one unimplemented method. I don't know how should I convert this particular Lambda? Does it belong to the test that takes animal or does it belong to the test that takes a string? Let me comment one of the unimplemented method and I'm going to comment the method that takes animal. So I will leave the test method which takes a string and let's see what our main class look like. And now we get an error in the parameter and it says incompatible parameter types in Lambda expression expected string but found animal. So now what it's doing is since we have explicitly mentioned the type of the lambda's parameter, so it's comparing that type to the type that is going in the test method of the check condition, which is string. So it's comparing animal and string and it says that, oh, the type doesn't match, like they are not in the same hierarchy. I don't know how to convert an animal into a string. Now let me go back to our previous way of writing lambda where we don't explicitly specify what is the parameter condition and in this case it says it cannot resolve the method get can hop in string so now it's considering the a type since we didn't provide it it's inferring the type as string from the test method the test method now takes string so it thinks that the type of the a is a string and it checks that the string doesn't have a method called get can hop and that's why it's giving an error that it doesn't identify the method that we are trying to call the certification exam will test your knowledge on familiarity of the lambda expression so you do need to know the construct of the lambdas so let's jump back into the slides and see some valid and invalid lambda expression. So this slide has a valid lambda expressions. The very first one, it doesn't take any parameters and it simply returns true. It's all this lambda does is it always returns true. Now let's move on to the second lambda expression. It takes one parameter and within the body, we are calling starts with method on that parameter that is being sent to the body and given that it's only one parameter and we are not explicitly mentioning the type the parentheses can be omitted so they are optional in this case in the third example we are taking one parameter again but in this case we are explicitly mentioning the type of the parameter in this case we do need the parentheses around the type and the variable name in the fourth one we are passing two parameters a and b 
And now when we have more than one parameter, even though if we do not specify it explicitly, we do need parentheses. So in this case, we are passing A and B. And in the body, we are simply calling A dot starts with, with the test. And we are not even using B, which is perfectly fine. It's exactly same as how a method in Java can have multiple parameters, but we don't have to use all of them. So this is a valid lambda. In the last example, we have two parameters and we are explicitly mentioning the type of both of the parameters. And on in the body, we are actually using A and B. Now let's move on to the invalid examples. The very first one, we are taking two parameters and in the body, we are saying A starts with B. The problem here is that since we are taking two parameters, we do need parentheses. Even though we are not specifying the type of the parameters explicitly, since they are more than one, the parenthesis is not optional. We do need it. Now let's look at the second example. In the second example, the body of the lambda has a curly braces. Curly braces are optional when we have only one single statement in the body. However, when there are more than one statement, it's not optional. So in this case, it is optional. However, when we do have the curly braces in the body, the return statement, the return keyword becomes mandatory. So it doesn't automatically returns a value. We need to add the return keyword explicitly. Now moving on to the third example. It has only one parameter. So we do not need parentheses, which looks all good. On the right hand side, we have a curly braces, but we also have a return statement. So which looks good. But the issue here is that the return statement we have written that is missing the semicolon at the end. So we do need a semicolon as well when we have a return statement. If we do not have curly braces and return statement, like in the example one here, then we do not need a semicolon. So this is a very important point. So just keep that in mind. That is all I wanted to discuss. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for my other upcoming videos. In the next video, I'm going to go over functional interface and I will also go over the commonly used functional interfaces when we write the lambda expressions. Until then, goodbye.